Check it out. What the f***? Don't die. What's up, y'all? It's your boy, Jay Jeezy Jenkins, and welcome to another episode of Work for Conversation. My guest tonight is a film producer whose movies have grossed over $175 million in the box office. He's also a minister and a New York Times bestselling author. He's tapping in with me to talk about his new book, Live Free. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the one and only Devon Franklin. What's up, my brother? Man, I'm feeling good. It's good to see you, dog. Uh, cause we, we finally get a chance to meet, like face to face, but Zoom, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I, I've been, exactly, I've man. Been, um, watching how you moving and, and, and seeing what you got going on, and um, you know, I, I didn't really know how in tune you were with religion until I just started peeping a lot of things that you were saying. But I love how yeah. the fact that you like um, you keep it balanced. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because you can still tell you got some ice in your veins and. You still move around and, and, and you understand the culture, but at the same time, you got a lot of principles and values and morals. Like, where, where did that come from? Was it your upbringing? Uh, man, yeah, you know, I'm from uh, from Oakland, you know, from oh, the Bay Area. Really? Yeah. <laughs> oh, really? I didn't expect that one. <laughs> I didn't yeah. expect that one. Yeah, man. So, you know, um, my, my I grew up originally in Richmond, uh, which is right, wow. you know, next to Oakland and Berkeley. And Abs then the church that I, I grew up in I is right is, there. there. Yeah, you know, you know. Um, <laughs> the church that I grew up in was is in East Oakland, uh, right there on 70th and MacArthur. So, you know, it was really, my upbringing was a combination of like, you know, knowing what was going on in the culture, knowing what was happening in the streets, but my mother made a very clear path for us. She was like, listen, even though, you know, that's there, we're gonna put you on this path. So it was never a situation where I understood religion independent of what was going on. It was always me learning the value of religion and faith in God, but still having a perspective on how to just move and deal in the world, man. Right, and that kind of, you know, it's crazy because my grandma, if, if it wasn't for my grandmother, I don't think I would know anything about religion or faith. And it's crazy because mm -hmm. like, she used to make me walk to church with her. And, and you know, I just thought church oh, wow. was this thing she did on Sunday to put on her good clothes. Cause that was a whole thing. <laughs> she had the hats, right. she had the dresses and I would just go with her. And I'm so thankful for that because sometimes, like when things get a little cloudy, all mm -hmm. I got is those lessons I learned walking and talking with her to church, and what I heard mm -hmm. in church, and me knowing that there's um, just something else out there, like a higher power. And that's crazy yeah. because, like Richmond in Oakland is, is is solid. That's a different type of town. <laughs> so if you keeping your faith and your religion out there, like you you got a whole other upbringing, brother. Because that, that ain't no Man. joke out there. <laughs> Man, we had to have faith to make it. I'm right. telling you that. <laughs> <laughs> like when when you um, and it's crazy because just now, just just hearing you say that, I can kind of see where you like you're able to mess like movies and ministry, and, yeah. and I think that's I think that's dope. Like, tell me tell me how, how did that become your formula? Yeah, well, um, you know, it all kind of came organically. You know, my father, um, I'm the middle child of three boys, and right. so growing up. Uh, my father, you know, basically, you know, became an alcoholic and just, you know, left the house. And so, you know, we never knew when we would see him. He was always kind of in and out. And, um, you know, long story short, when I was nine years old, he died of a heart attack when he was uh, 36. And, um, you know, it was just devastating for me and my brothers and my mother. And, you know, he kind of left my mother to raise us along with my grandmother and my grandmother's seven sisters. And, you know, my mother didn't have enough money for therapy. And so, you know, what, what became my therapy was going to church and then, you know, watching movies and TV shows. So, wow. you know, movies like Back to the Future and uh, the Rocky franchise right. and The Color Purple. These were some of my favorite movies growing up and The Cosby Show and A Different World. Those were some of my favorite TV shows. And so it was really going to church and watching entertainment that really helped me navigate this very difficult period. And uh, when I, as I was coming through that, I started to get really, like, curious about entertainment. Wow. You know, how does it work? You know, who who's making these movies and TV shows? Give me the understanding of what's going on. And so the more curious I became, the more passion that I had. But the big thing is that as I got into my teenage years and I started telling people, hey, I want to go to Hollywood. I want to make a career in entertainment. The folks at the church were like, well, you can't do that. That's mm -hmm. Sodom and Gomorrah. Hollywood is the devil's playground. Wow. You're going to lose your faith. 
So I was like, well, listen, I'm going to go anyway because I got to see, you know, like I can't let my life be determined by you. Right. So what happened was that I was I was sensitive to the fact that people thought I was going to lose my faith. And I was like, I don't know. I don't believe that. So at 18 years old, I went to USC, got, went down to L.A., majored in business, minored in film. That freshman year, I got an internship interview at the company that managed Will Smith. Wow. It was run by Benny Medina and James Lasseter. I know Benny. I know Benny, yeah. And, you know Benny. Yeah. Um, and so I got in that internship interview, and they, we were, you know, the interview was going fine. And they said, is there anything else you want us to know? And at the end of that interview, I said, listen, I observed the Sabbath. So if taking this job would require me to work Friday night sundown to Saturday night sundown, I won't take the internship. And in that moment, they were like, wow, okay. And they said, cool, no problem. So I took the internship and that internship laid the foundation for the rest of my career. And as I grew up in the business, I was always vocal about my faith and also right. committed to learning. So the combination of movies and ministry just started organically. They've never been independent for me. It's always mm -hmm. just been something that I am. Right. It's someone who I am. And as I got to become an executive for Sony Pictures and worked on Pursuit of Happiness and Seven Pounds and Hancock and The Karate Kid and Jumping the Broom and Sparkle and Heaven is Real and all these movies, Everybody always knew that my faith was important to me. Wow. And then I was able to make content that was reflective of that because I knew, because going back to that kid, entertainment inspired me. Wow. If it wasn't for entertainment, I wouldn't have made it through the death of my father. And so I wanted to be a part of a system that could give people that same hope right. and that same inspiration. That's, that's crazy because even like, like going back to what my grandmother taught me, what I learned in church, that was the only thing when I got into my line of uh, work that kept me solid. They kept the integrity, mm. the integrity there because I had something yeah. to, to, to reference back. And I always thought to myself, because that was the thing, like when you get into something, you got to know it's temptation, it's, 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 yeah. it's, it's penitentiary chances, it's, you know, all these different mm. things. <laughs> right. Like, you got you to gotta have some type of mental GPS or either, you know, a, 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 a address, if you will, where you're trying to go. And anything that doesn't have anything to do with that, you, you can't take any, any sudden right turns, left turns. You got to stay That's on course. Right. And it's hard because if you don't have faith, you really don't have a foundation to stand on. You That's right. What I'm saying? That's right. And, and, and it's like, you know, even with my humble beginnings, even now I find myself like a lot of times when things happen or things come across my, my desk and I go, how do I feel about that? You know, and, and I'm mm. sure looking at my old self as well because it's like I'm still – who I am, I want to grow, but I don't ever want to lose myself. And that's the one thing, Yeah. Um, you, you from the base, so you know Shakir Stewart, which was one of my, my great friends that passed. And he used to yeah. always, we used to always talk about just keeping it solid with yourself. And he used to always yeah. say, it's easy, like, no matter what you do, like, just stay who you are. And, and, and even yeah. now, when I make different moves, I can tell, you know, what people that's been rocking with me for a while, they go like, yo, that, that, that ain't, what we know you for, and I'm like, that's the point. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like, this is true to <laughs> exactly. me. Exactly. It's true to me. So I don't. When I get up in the morning, I can look in the mirror and I can feel good about what I'm doing because it's an accomplishment for me. So I can yeah. still play this game um, that we all play, like like you do in Hollywood. You can play that game, yeah. but you haven't Absolutely. lost what makes you you. And I, I commend you on that because that's not easy. So so what does no what does ministry need to look like? to impact this current generation? Because I, I've, you know, I, I find myself, you know, I might be in the gym and and I feel that I need it. I, I just go on to the, um, one of those podcasts and go check out T.D. Jakes or yeah. you know, some different people because <laughs> I like, you know what, I, I need to feel somebody's yeah. word. And I find myself going on YouTube and just, you know, finding different um, uh, pastors and, and, and their messages and just kind of pulling from it. What do you what do you feel like ministry means to this generation? You know, I think that ministry um, still has an incredible value. Um, I also feel that there's a higher demand in this generation for a stronger connection between ministry and authenticity. OK, uh, you know, in, in the generation that, you know, I kind of grew up in and the generation that my mother grew up in, it was kind of like uh, do as I do. I mean, do as I say, don't right, do as I do. Right. right? And like, right, right. well, why should we got to go to church? Because I said so. Right. That's just what it was like growing up. We didn't have any options. Like I said so. Right. But this generation is that that doesn't work. You know, so I think the demand from ministry standpoint is authenticity. They want to know that the people that they're listening to are actually living the life they're talking about. 
And no longer can a preacher get up and just, you know, or a minister get up and just talk theoretically, but then people see him living somewhere different. Wow. You know, we're in a culture right now where, you know, especially this generation, this younger generation, man, they, they want hope, they want inspiration, they want God. They just are a little um, skeptical right. sometimes of the messengers right. because there's been a lot of, you know, issues in the church and, and a lot of, you know, scandals and whatnot. So I do believe that ministry right now is needed. Uh, having a relationship with God is is critical. Knowing faith, I think, is is like, I know I wouldn't be where I am without it. Right. Um, but I think that the, the, the key is to let people see, you know, and this is why I live the way I live is like, listen, it's not about perfection. It's about authenticity. So I'm like, I don't want you to hear me talk about God. And then you see no evidence of God and how I live. Right. Like I, I, that's, I'm like, no, if you're going to, if you're going to see me talk about God, then I want you to turn the volume down on everything you see me do and just look, observe. Mm. Can you see the evidence of what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Because we are in a show me generation, not a tell me generation. Right. And the more that we can show the value of faith, and show the real the real reason to have a relationship with God and show what that means, I think that the more ministry will remain relevant. But if ministry does not take the path of authenticity, then we could find ourselves in a place where ministry loses its impact and its influence in the culture. Right, right, because now I don't know what I'm believing. Um, That's right. It's, it's, it's crazy because like when you look at the, you know, you look at Instagram, you look at social media, you see everybody trying to live their best life, they don't really yeah. incorporate God a lot in that. You, you know what I'm saying? Right. They don't really sit I there do. and thank God for what they have. And it's almost like I did it myself and I'm good. Mm. Now and everybody trying to live this persona. And I just wonder with the persona, like how much of that is real? Meaning like how, 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 how much value, how many values can you really have? And what are your morals like if you're willing to go out here and, and really like pretend to be somebody else to be accepted and, man and, and, you know what I mean? it's just like, <laughs> yeah. dude but that's what that's why i wrote this book man because right. so often first of all social media it's curated meaning like we everybody who posts on social media gets a chance to decide what pictures they want to post right maybe they take 20 pictures just to post one what videos so the whole thing to a degree is manipulated and manufactured. Mm. So so that that manufacturing is like okay, I'm going to manufacture the image or the persona that that I feel is going to help me have acceptance and influence and advancement. Now, the disconnect comes when that manufactured image is not really who we are. Right. And ultimately, one of the reasons why I wrote this book Live Free is because I want people to live free of creating the persona that they think is going to take them to their destiny. It won't. Mm. The only path, the only, the only, like if we get on the path of destiny, that's the path that already has everything we need. And, and, and if we get on the path of, of trying to create the persona, that persona path, we find ourselves less happy. We right. find ourselves discontent. Right. We find ourselves frustrated, angry. Why? Because we're trying to keep up the image, but the image has limited amount of blessing. We can manufacture blessings. But the blessings that God has for us are far greater than any blessing we can manufacture. Fact, and, and, so I wrote this book because I want people to get on the path of their true self, yeah, no matter gotta, what people expect, yeah, we gotta no matter what that. people think, yeah, we what's in your that. heart, yes, and that. not let social media Dictate. become the medium right. of, of you becoming someone you know you're not, just, to, just for likes. Don't live for likes. Right. Live for truth. I like that. Don't live for likes. We definitely got to get into that book. Um, what, what I was going to ask you, so let, let's just say you're doing all this to fit in, right? With, yeah. With, 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 so you, you, you're posting these cars, this money, this life, this everything, but not realizing that everybody else that's in there with it with you is doing the same. So mm. we all know there's no honor amongst thieves. Mm. So it's just like what what like where's there, there's no integrity in it. So if yeah. you're willing to do anything to, you know, stay relevant, um, you know, to stay in the topic of conversation, to be in, in, in the in the winner's circle, to be liked, to be accepted, all these things, like how how empty do you think these people really are when it's when 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 they go home at night and they lay mm -hmm. down and they go to sleep and they know tomorrow rent's due, 
They just spent, mm. you know, the last 800 on some Dior's mm. <laughs> and, and a Miami <laughs> trip. And, 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 and you sit there and you, and, and, and you, and I, my, my uncle used to tell me all the time, like, fake it till you make it. And I was just like, I don't like that advice. Because mm -hmm. if I make it, I'm gonna be fake. I don't, I don't, I don't, mm -hmm. you know, I don't, I don't get that. So I would mm -hmm. rather not even indulge in in trying to fit in and do my thing so that I can maintain my peace, rather than mm -hmm. trying to be, you know, in the mix. It's almost like, you know, you you want to be a, a, on the basketball team or something. So you taking all the picks and, and you got all the gear on and the, the dope shoes and the and the, and the and the and the headband and the whatever. Then when it's time to play in the game, you, you ain't can't got no play. skills. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you ain't got no skills. And when that whistle blow. <laughs> It's game on, and and right. and, and, I, and I sit back and I watch, you know, you know these kids, like you know, they out here risking their lives to to be that, you know what I mean? Mm. And to and, and to and and one thing I loved about really learned about Bob Marley, like you know, we all know he was a you know icon and he was world renowned. But what I loved about him the most is that he stood for something. He had principle, and yeah. all his people from where he was from. Um, yeah. felt that and it's like they already felt rich without the accolades when we come back Devon Franklin and I will be talking about his new book live free right here with the conversation let's get it come back to work the conversation Devon Franklin is here and we're talking his new book live free live free talk to me <laughs> yeah, yeah man you. you know it's something i want to i want to just hit on what you hit on what you touched on and then and then i can tie it into the book um i i think that one of the 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 reasons why so many people um find relief and release in you know doing it for the gram and creating this image is because there's a lot of pain associated mm. with being your mm. true self at times, right. especially right. if you grew up and your authentic self was never accepted. Mm. So if you grew up in a home where let's say you had moments when you were creative or you did what you thought, you know, you felt you wanted to do and somebody said, shut up, right. Get in line. Don't cry. Right. That's not how, you know, young boys are supposed to act. So That's so not how young girls sounds, are supposed to act. Sounds very familiar. <laughs> right. Right. So, so, so then what happens is from that young age through through violence or through put down or or through, um, you know, negative conversation. Sometimes you can be socialized into believing that your tr true self is not accepted. Mm. So then when you talk about social media, it's like, oh, I can create an image of who I want to be and find all the accolades, even though it's different than who I am. And so that 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 relief and release that that sometimes social media can provide a lot of it comes from a pain of sometimes people not really feeling like they they can be who they really are and that they know how to do it because for so long they've never done it. Right. And and we live in a culture sometimes that rewards you talk about the you said the winner circle at the end of the day, you know, as a society. We the ones that say, okay, if you reach a certain status, that's the winner circle. Yeah, yeah. But if you got there and it's not who you are, it's the loser circle. Absolutely. Because no matter what we say, okay, you have a certain amount of money, you got a certain amount of accolades, okay, fine. But if that's not who you are, you're in the wrong circle. And, and so and speaking with Tony oh, yeah. Rob speaking with Tony Robbins, we talk all the time. And he was like, geez, you wouldn't believe how many billionaires that have to coach that are just the most unhappy people in the whole wide world. Like they're just wow. so unhappy. They don't know what they're doing wow. themselves. And if you just sit there, you go, a billionaire? I'm just like, scratching my head. <laughs> like, damn, you know, like, you know what I mean? But, He's like, like man, right, give me a billion right, to see right, how right. I manage that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, you know but, but, but to me, and, and that's why I respect your approach because, and, and even my approach is like, I just want to give people information to help them understand how to accept themselves and know that they are enough and not try to do things. Because you see, in, in my generation, I lost so many friends um, to prison, to, to being murdered, to try to live a certain lifestyle that can't be sustained. It, it cannot. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's, 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 it's not, it is no way possible. And the chances that I took and, and found a career to, to open up some other doors for me, you know, I took those chances knowing that, okay, it's gonna go either one or two ways. Either I'm, I'm gonna make it through or I'm not, but I'm, I'm willing to accept mm -hmm. either way. 
but as long as I keep my morals and values. And then you get to a place where, okay, you got something that's sustainable. And mm. but, but then, but but I look at it like this because my uncle used to always tell me like, you know, you you can be you can get a brand new car and a brand new outfit, but mentally you can still have the same mindset and problems. So you'll just be the, you just be a, a a guy with a new outfit and a new car with the same mindset. You can buy a brand new house. And you're mm. going there with the same demons. You That's know what right. I mean? And, and, and they'll hunt you every day and night. So I think the real the real wealth is is, is working on yourself and understanding. Yeah. Because when you see people and they're just naturally happy, and you sit there, and it used to be a long time I used to sit there and be like, how in the hell are you smiling <laughs> all day? I don't get it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was getting up in the morning gang banging on, on bacon, man. I was mad at the bacon. Like, I was just mad. You know what I mean? Because life had dealt me a bad hand. And I was just like, yo, why me? And the minute I started just to understand, like, you know, only you can make this better for yourself, who you surround yourself with, the type of conversations mm -hmm. you have, the way you take care of yourself, um, being present. Because it was a lot of times I used to be at dinners and with people and I would be thinking about everything else in the world but what I was doing. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Wow. But I didn't know how to be present. And you yeah. know what I'm saying? And it was it was it was to my kids that I just started realizing that, you know, you, you gotta sit down and just have that, you know, that one or two hours where nothing else comes in and, and, and distracts you and that's 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 mm -hmm. real happiness because you gonna hear your baby laugh, you're gonna see her, you know, scrape <laughs> her knee. And she's gonna come to you and say, "Daddy, this and that," and then you just start understanding. Wow, this is what it's really about: family, yeah. people, and, and, and waking up every day and choosing to be happy over yeah. choosing all this other stuff that you can't maintain or sustain. Because there it you, is. You feel me? You can have a billion <laughs> dollars. Clearly, it can't sustain happiness. So, right. Yeah, it's real. Right, man. What I what I love what you're saying, you know, and and uh, I talk about this in the book. You know that that at the end of the day, we have to be the ones to create our happiness. Right. And a lot of times, you know, we're trying to outsource our happiness to people, circumstances, and situations. And I believe that at the end of the day, we have to be the ones to decide what makes us happy, right. what creates our happiness, and so that we are the ones that are in control of that. Right. Because whenever we're outsourcing it, you know, we're outsourcing it to this person. Well, guess mm -hmm. what? That person might make you happy for a minute, but what happens when they do stuff that you don't like? Right. Oh, then you cut them off or right. there's a problem, right? right? Or let's say, you know, I, I, I'm relying upon, you know, making a certain amount of money to be happy. Okay, well, what's, what do you do when, when a certain month, you know, your, your funds dip? Does that mean you're not happy and you're not content? So one of the reasons I wrote this book and when I talk about live free, living free means that we are not under the emotional, physical, or mental control of anyone or anything. That we are the ones that get to determine the expectations that we live by. We don't allow everyone else's expectations to become our expectations. And when we live free, that's the real path of peace. That's the real path path of happiness. That's the real path of, of true freedom. And one of the reasons why I wrote this book is because so many people are not living free. They're living for their parents. They're living for their spouses. They're living for their kids. They're living for their, their church. They're living for the culture. They're living for the job. Everybody but themselves. And for me, you know, I thought about this question that I pose to everybody. I say, you know, I thought about my life and I said, man, could I live with getting to the end of my life? And God said, great, you did everything that was expected, but you didn't do what was destined. Mm. And I could not live with that reality. So that's why I said, listen, I got to start making changes now to become my true self. And I want to encourage everyone everybody to do the same because you you don't get anything out of doing what's expected unless it's unless it aligns with what's in your heart right and if it's not in your heart you might have to tell your mother i love you mom but i can't do that right you know you might have to tell your spouse hey babe i right. love you but that, 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 you know what that ain't me T tell me you know tell me, tell me three three changes that you made that you felt like was detrimental to to where you at right now great so so one of the things for me and this was a catalyst to writing the book so number one was and I talk about this in the book, that I, I wrote this because no matter all the successes I was having in entertainment and all the successes I've had in my life, I wasn't happy. Right. I was discontent, I was frustrated, I was mad. You know, movies would come out and, and, you know, and they would be relatively successful, but I wouldn't be happy, why? And I started to say, man, you know what? There's something going on here. And I realized, oh, my expectations are so high. Wow. And I am I am attaching my personal value to the success yes. of a movie, oh, right. 
to the success of a book, right. to whatever happens on social media. Mm. So I am allowing these things to be the puppet master and control my life. And I got to the point, man, where I was so frustrated. I said, man, something's got to change. So number one, I said, okay, I got to get control of my expectations. Why am I putting so heavy expectations on my, on myself? And then I had to go back. You know, I've been, you know, I, I have I have a therapist. I got a life coach, man. Because oh, yeah. right. I'm like, man, I need help doing this work. Right. So as I went back, I realized, oh, got it. When I was a kid, coming out of the death of my father, one of the ways that I found acceptance was through achievement. So if I did well in school, everybody right. said, good job, Devon. Right. If I, you know, played well in basketball, oh, good job, Devon. Right. If I was active in student government, oh, good job, Devon. Attaboy. So I started to create a performance-based uh, life. And I found my all my value in achievement. And it got to the point where people started calling me in middle school, Mr. Perfect. And so at first I was like, yo, that's dope. Oh, Mr. Perfect. But then as I got older, I said, oh, Mr. Perfect is a prison because I'm not perfect. Right. <laughs> but I'm putting up this image, right? Yeah. I'm trying to present this image that, oh, I got it all together and I'm doing it all perfectly and I know I'm not. Yes. So I had to get to the point where I was in enough pain that I had to make a different choice. Mm. And so I started to, to look at my uh, expectations. I started to go through the process of releasing as many expectations as possible. Well, why do I have this expectation? Why do I have that expectation? And what difference does it make? Whether I have a hit movie or a hit book or somebody likes what I posted, it doesn't matter. I gotta find the value here. And if I keep searching out there, I'm gonna keep searching for the rest of my life. Yeah. So I had to find my value in here. And then three, I had to start having some difficult conversations. I had to learn the value of saying no. You know, so because it's like sometimes people would ask me to do things, and because that Mr. Perfect persona was a people pleaser. Okay. So somebody asked me to do something, I might not want to do it, but I don't want to make them mad. I don't want to disappoint them. So what do I do? I say yes. Yes, 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 yes. I yesing, I'm yesing, I was yesing myself out of the moment. Wow. And I was over obligating myself. And I was the one having to pay for it. Tired no energy, frustrated, because I'm over here making everybody else happy, and it wasn't in my heart. So I had to learn the power of no. Wow. I had to politely say, yo, that's the, you know what? God's not calling me to do that. You know what? Hey, I know somebody else who could do that for you. Mm. No, no. You know what? I'm going to pray on that. Mm. Why? Because I had to take control back of my life, wow. and I had to find the path to living free. And that's why, and those are some of the tips and tools that I put in the book, wow. and that's why I wrote it. I love that. And and, and it's crazy because um, just hearing you say that, um, I, I was one of the same, you know, I wouldn't miss the perfect. I definitely wasn't the class president. I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the hood president, but, <laughs> but, but um, I, you know, I, I can relate to that because I, I you know, I, I'm a Libra, of course, but I just always wanted to be the one that people can call on or that mm. if I do a job, I'm gonna do it, you know, above and beyond and, and I'm gonna give it my all and even with musically, you know, I was, you know, I came up out of the, 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 the hood, you know what I mean? Yeah. No, no business sense, whatever. No high school education, got my GED when I was locked up. And I came out and, and, I, and I was like, you know, if I don't know anything, I believe in myself, so I know I can do this. Sure. So all these years I worked, all the money I invested in myself, everything I did, um, it was a rush. But the minute I got my first platinum plaque, I. It, it was mm. like I had survivor's remorse. You know mm. what I'm saying? I was just wow. like, and, and you know, you think about all this money. And the first time I got, you know, uh, you know, you know, I was always into get money, but I was a guy that couldn't get my own house in my my, my name or my car in my name because I was living another life. You know what I mean? Wow. And I was just like, the minute I could put a house in my name, and, duh, 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 and I did it, and I wasn't happy. Mm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And it just wow. kept, it was just like this. This thing, and I was just doing all these things and, 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 and getting these awards and getting these opportunities and, you know, um, doing these tours. You know, I said it, like, you know, I grew up listening to Jay-Z. Now I'm headlining a tour yeah. with him. And when the tour's <laughs> over, I'm just like, uh. And I just wow. couldn't figure it out. And, and like you said, I had to get outside of my comfort zone. I just had to start talking to people that aren't people that you would associate me with. <laughs> yes, yes. Expectations are strong belief about what should happen. Okay. 
a strong belief about what should happen. And so that that should is what gets us in trouble. Mm. And so I talk about in the book, you know, here's how we know what we should believe what will happen in the future, what we shouldn't. Uh, you have to ask two questions. What's in your control? And if the expectation involves someone else, has it been communicated? So a lot of times our expectations are unrealistic. Why? Because we're trying to control things out of our control. Right. And and when you think about, you know, our career or you say, you know, or, or you're dealing with somebody else, one of the greatest frustrations in a relationship is trying to control somebody that we have no control over. Mm. So, you know, it's like, oh, I want you to do this or I want you to do that. Well, guess what? The only thing we control is ourselves. Right. That's it. Right. So um, the other part about control specific to like career is that, you know, I talk about this in the book, no matter how hard we try, we do not always control the result. What right. we control is the process. Right. So when we treat the process as the result, we usually ultimately get the result that we're seeking. Treat the, so the process pro as the result. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, so like, for example, you know, you were talking about, you know, earlier, you know, selling out, selling records, you know, or, you know, or now streams, right? No matter how hard you try, you can't actually make someone listen to the music you create. Correct. But what you can do is you can control your lyrics. You can control the production. Right. Right. You can control what type of themes and ideas you mm -hmm. bring to the music. You mm -hmm. can control the marketing and publicity. You can control your interaction with the fans. So the more you put into that process, the greater the result will be. Right. But so often we focus on, oh, I want to get the result and we overlook the process. Well, the process is all we got control of. That's it. Mm. And too often in life, we are frustrated and we have unset and unrealistic expectations because we're trying trying to control something we don't control. So I talk about this in the book that when we talk about what we should believe will happen, I believe that if if you're if it's in your control, you can believe it. But if it's not, you may hope that it happens, but don't make it an expectation because mm -hmm. that expectation that's out of your control ultimately can lead you to become devastated. Right. Because you are believing something's gonna happen that you do not control and you're acting as if it will. And if it, and as if it should, and when it doesn't, man, yeah. we're devastated. Right. The second thing is yeah. is communication. You got to communicate. Right. We can't just have these unspoken expectations of everybody in every situation and not express it. Say, hey, you know, is this what we can? Is this what I can expect from you? You so, know, so is you this what I can expect from this like, situation? So, so you said communicate. communicate. So so if it's a relationship, is it with your team? If it's with yes. your, your group of peers? Yes. But, but you know, the thing about it is, it's hard because you know, even as a black man. I couldn't, you know, if, this is why I rewind it, you know, 10 years ago. I couldn't go and sit down and talk to my homies and be like, yo, you know, I'm about to drop this project. I hope it does well. And, you know, and I don't really know when I'm kind of nervous. You know, I could see them go looking at me like, what? Like, because they look at you like God. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, you know what you're doing. Like, you, you may, and, and it's like, if you give them any sense of, you know, uncertainty, it's almost like you lose respect, you mm -hmm. know? And, and, and I know that might sound ignorant to say, but it's just like- No, 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 that's real. Yeah, you know what I mean? It's just like, cause they, everybody looks to you for the courage and the heart, mm -hmm. and you can have the courage mm -hmm. and the heart. But I love what you're saying about having the courage and the heart, but just knowing that you can't control the outcome. There you go, exactly, you know exactly. And, and, and we go hard for the process, man. Right. Like, uh, I mean, that process is rich. That process is everything. Right. And that process is rewarding because if we only focus on the result, you talk about getting the platinum plaque. All right, well, you got the platinum plaque. Right. But if in the process, you weren't really in the process, you were just for the platinum plaque, you got the plaque and it was like, okay. Well, I'm gonna be honest, so that I, I was just for the plaque. I'm gonna keep, <laughs> I'm keep it real. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> I got that plaque, I was like, yeah, so what we doing next? But what we but, doing next, right? right. But, but as now, you know, like now, you know, all my plaques in, 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 you know, in, in my in my meeting room. And, and sometimes I just kind of look back at them when I'm on calls and when I'm like, yo, like I really put some points on the board and the only thing that I do regret is that I didn't enjoy the process yeah. as much. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. I had expectations. Yeah. And when it didn't hit that, I did kind of feel a way like maybe I didn't do something right. Maybe I didn't yeah. have this right. Maybe I should have thought it this way. And, and, mm. and like you're saying, to live free, I would encourage people to understand that you don't lose, you learn. And that's what I had there to learn. I had to learn. You know what I'm saying? I just started learning, okay, yeah. what can I do better for myself? You know what I mean? And that was, yeah. oh, well, look, you know, and I tell you, like, the truth, like, between um, 
uh, uh, 103 in the recession, what I done better for yeah. myself is I started working out. And I noticed wow. that my shows, it used to be all the fellas in the front, you know, all the gangsters, but then that switched <laughs> and started being all the ladies. And then I didn't throw bras <laughs> on the stage. I'm like, oh, okay, I'm doing better for okay. myself, <laughs> right? So, but, but that, right. That, that was something that, that made me feel proud because now I'm like, you know, I'm taking care of myself. And, and, and that's the part of the process that I think I kicked the survivor's remorse because I, I did something outside of trying to get mm. the plaque. I did something for myself. Yeah. I did something that took dedication. I did something that took discipline and, and I did it. You know what I mean? And yeah, I saw man. Results. Yeah, so it was a good thing. I love it. One thing that you said earlier, which I thought was, which I thought was fascinating, is like um, the expectations that have come along with the Jeezy persona. Right. You know, and, and what I love about what I see you doing is as you start to live free, you're like getting more comfortable with living in a way that sometimes goes against the right. Jeezy persona. Oh yeah, absolutely. You know, um, which yeah. is which is dope, man, because that persona is so strong. Yes. Um, but for it to not become a prison for you and to see you living free and like, yo, man, I'm out on a 20 mile bike ride. Right. That's like, right. that's awesome. Right, and, and, and for me, you know, even when I got into the game, I wanted to motivate, inspire, mm. and, and, and get people to um, understand that you gotta think outside the box. And going back yeah. to what you said earlier about um, ministry, is this how can you preach these things if you're not doing them? Right. You know what I mean. So, so I have to yep. be, I have to be the front runner, and that's one thing about a leader. They're up front, and they got to take whatever criticism come with it. And you know, yeah. I, you know, and, and it comes. And I just look at myself, but I'm happy. That's the difference. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I see the criticism coming. I was like, man, I'm like, yo, but I'm happy. I'm like, yeah. okay, that's cool. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, yeah, I love it, I love it. Right. You know, it's, when you said that, what, what, why, why I related to that so deeply is like, you know, I had this vision, it was almost like God gave me this uh, vision as related to uh, like the persona that I created. So he gave me this vision and it was like, okay, that persona, like I was, I, the real Devon was in an Uber being driven by that persona. So Mr. Perfect is yeah. driving, tell me about it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, so Mr. Perfect is driving, but we get to this part in the journey where the road ahead is very steep and it's incredibly narrow. Right. And Mr. Perfect turns around to me, says, you have to get out and go. The, if you, if you want to go the rest of the way, you're gonna, you're, you are going to have to go by yourself. So it was like my authentic self, in order to go to the next level of life, in order to go further where God created me to go, I couldn't use the persona anymore. Mm. I had to go as my true self. Because the persona, and that's, the persona no longer serves you. Exactly. Yes. Exactly, it took me as far as it could take me. Absolutely. And, and it's fine, we could stay right there and live, right. live our life right there. But if I right. wanna go further, I had to let my true self out of the persona right. and go. And that's what I'm, that's the journey I'm on right now. Right. You know, of really trying to be my true self, my authentic self, no matter what people think, no matter what people say, and really trying to encourage everybody else to do the same. And so when I hear you talk about that Jeezy persona and breaking out of it, it just reminded me of that vision. So so live free. I'm 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 this guy, I got a pretty decent job, got a you know, great family, but I'm 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 not happy. I'm mm -hmm. I'm not understanding why, you know, every day to me seems like a struggle, even though things are going pretty well but I'm not living my life to the fullest. I pick yeah. up live free, what am I expecting? Oh what man, you're expecting the manual. Like, yeah, yeah that's, what I, that's, what, that's what I need to hear. Wait. Yeah, this man, listen, when you pick up live free, this book is the manual on how to find contentment, how to be happy, right. you know, how to ask some questions. If I'm not living the life that I wanna live, whose life am I living? Mm. And, and, and when did I start living that life? You know, and, and and if I'm not living for myself and I'm not living for God, who am I living for? So when you pick up Live Free, I mean, this is, it's more than a book. It's really a manual on how to restart and reorient your life and really allow who you really are to come forward. And the book gives you uh, strategies, tips, and tools on how to do it. The book is separated into four different sections. So you know how to set, set personal expectations, cultural expectations, relational expectations and professional expectations. Wow. So this book gives you every area where your expectations uh, can wreak the most havoc. 
Right. The live free will allow you and help you to know how to deal with expectations in every area and then set those expectations for yourself. So, you know, I got to ask. So is there is there a area for expectations in marriage? <laughs> <laughs> yes, my brother. <laughs> Talk to I me. got you. <laughs> Talk to me. Give me a little insight. <laughs> well, listen, congratulations. You, you. Know, uh, you know, I've known Gene for a long time, man. And I'm happy for y'all, man. Thank you, brother. And, and listen, what I'll say is don't don't do what I did. Okay. Right? When I got married, okay, <laughs> you know, I had these unspoken expectations, right? Okay. So Megan and I got married. I had these unspoken expectations that she was going to cook. So at first it was fine because she cooked. She was right. cooking. Right. But but you know, I talk about this in the book. She only had one recipe it right. was for baked chicken. Right. That was it. <laughs> we we baked chicken every night. But right. I said, no problem. I right. love to bake chicken. Right. So she ended up leaving to go to New York to shoot a TV show. When she comes back, I was expecting the baked chicken. I would come home day after day from work. Nothing in the oven, nothing in the microwave, nothing in the refrigerator, nothing. She wasn't cooking. So I started to get mad. I'm like, yo, don't you know, like you're back. You're supposed to cook. Like, you know, you're my wife. Like you supposed to, don't you love me? Why aren't you cooking? Mm. Unspoken expectation. Right. So then I started to judge her heart and, and her disposition. I said, well, maybe she don't love me that much. Maybe she doesn't understand what a wife's supposed to do. Here I am. Here's what we do. We have these unspoken expectations. And then we act as if we talk to the person and then we judge them mm. as if they agreed to it when they never knew to begin with. Right. So finally, we got to the point where she said, what's wrong with you? Because my attitude was real salty. And I just blurted out, why aren't you baking the chicken? You know, <laughs> <and> she, <laughs> she looked, <laughs> like what? <laughs> what? Right. right, right. So then she, she looked at me and she was like, look, I'll be honest. I could feel the weight of your expectation. And it took the joy out of it for me. Wow. When I started cooking, I was just cooking because I loved you. But then it felt like it became an obligation. Mm. And then all of a sudden you started to treat me a little bit differently when I didn't do it. And I just didn't have the joy to do it anymore. Mm. And I said, oh, right. right. My fault. Because here I am. I am making what was supposed to be unconditional love. I have now made our love condition. conditioned on some baked chicken. Wow. I've allowed chicken <laughs> to become a condition not of our the, love. Not the baked chicken. <laughs> so I said, yo, I said, listen, I said, first of all, babe, I'm sorry. Please right. forgive me. And I said, from, from this day forward, let's take the expectation off of who cooks. I may cook, you may cook, we may right. order out. But no right. longer are we going to put that weight of who's going to cook and then judge each other by. I said, that's done. So from that day to this, man, we haven't worried about it. Right. Um, but so I, I talk about that in the book as a way for couples, especially in marriage, to make sure you're communicating what your expectation is and not just assuming. So when you say, just because they love you, they don't know. And so you, when you say unspoken, that means because you're not communicating the expectation. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. So if I was gonna if I was gonna reset that expectation, if I was gonna turn back the clock, I would have asked her, Hey, babe, you know, um, can I expect you to cook? Can we talk about that? You know, like I love when you cook. It, it really makes me feel very loved. Can I expect that or not? And how should we sort that out? Because I don't want to expect you to do something that you don't want to do. Right. If we had started to have that conversation, it would have made a healthier, you know, dynamic instead of me just assuming that, that she was going to do it. Right. Because a lot of times we act as if they just because they love us doesn't mean they know. Right. And that's critical, especially as you're, you know, starting in this marriage, like you can't over communicate and you can't just assume that, oh yeah, well she loves me, so she gonna know I like certain things certain ways. She may not. Right. She may need you and you may and, and you may need her to really communicate and to teach and instruct, oh baby, this is how I like this, this is right. how I like that. Oh, okay, cool, got it. Right. I didn't know that. But now that I know, and because I want to contribute to your happiness, it's going to actually impact what I do. I love that contribute to your to your happiness. That's the, yeah. I love that phrase. So right now, like healthy relationship goals, how you think like pop culture is affecting relationship goals? Because now it's like if you ain't buying her a Bentley every other month, oh uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> if she can't put some Birkins on the gram, it's like you ain't doing your oh. job. You know, I mean, my, me personally, I'd rather buy some land. <laughs> or get there you some, go. Get there you go. Coins. I don't know. <laughs> but, but like, what, <laughs> what do you think pop culture has done for, for relationship goals? Because when I see things, it's almost, and, and I'm not against that because everybody should want to do something nice for their for their significant other. But like, when you see it, it's just like, who spends the most? What's the yeah. most outlandish thing you can buy a person? Yeah. Or what's, what's the most 
outlandish thing, you can get her uh, overdo it, and, and, and I'm not opposed yeah. to it because everybody has different love languages, so I respect that. But I'm saying, like, what do you think pop culture has done the relationship goals? It used to be if you take somebody to the movies and go get a cherry Coke, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> take the you were dip, good. Smart difference afterwards, you good. You know what I mean? You did your right, job. Right, right, right. It's a whole different monster now. Well, well, I think that pop culture has created unrealistic expectations around relationship goals. Okay. And and one of the reasons why, you know, I, I, ta I have a whole section in this book about relationships is because I don't want anyone to look outside of themselves and say, I want that. Mm. Why? Because that, all you can see is the presentation. Right. No matter what relationship on the outside I think looks cool, I don't know the full story. You don't know the full story, good or bad. So it's dangerous when you're in a relationship and you're looking at couples in pop culture and say, ooh, I want that. No, no, even Megan and I, we wrote a book years ago called The Wait, and it's, it's you know, really impacted a lot of people in a positive way. But I, I resist, like, hey, don't, don't make us your relationship goals. Right. You know, we're happy to, to, to give you some instruction on what may work, but we are all trying to figure this thing out. Right. So I think pop culture is creating these unrealistic ideas and ideals that both men and women are feeling the pressure to live up to. I think the most successful relationships come when both people decide we're going to become our best self for each other. Right. We're going to figure out what works for us. And we're not going to let somebody doing it for the gram disrupt our relationship because right. we're taking their expectation and making it ours. Nah, we're going to create our own expectation. Well, no, that's real because, boy, I'm going to tell you, whew, it's rough out there for a few people, <laughs> man. <You know? laughs> like, I understand. But Birkin, you got to live free. Any more Birkin bags, man. Man, listen. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, nah, I, def I definitely respect that. It, it, you know, like like I said, we all come from humble beginnings, and when you get into some type of success, and it's crazy that those things represent success, and then that we yeah. weave them into um, relationships and, and what 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 intimacy means, and and and, yeah. and and just partnership. And I just, you know, I would encourage anyone to just to look at the um, the. Uh, uh, the, the, just look at the full picture as far as sure. longevity, you know? Absolutely. You know, and, Absolutely. and don't base things, you know, just on what someone can do. You know, and I talk to my daughter about this all the time. Everybody's not worth your, your time. Like, you know, That's everybody's right. not worth your attention or, or, or even, you know, you, you, you taking the time to acknowledge certain things because yeah. you, you, you are rich in heart. Yeah. You, you, you're rich That's right. in mind. Like, you, you're, you're smart, you, you get it. You speak five languages, like I, I, you know, and, and, you, and you're a kid. <laughs> right. I can't even do that. You know what I'm saying? So I tell anybody out there, just just know that you know that that you are rich already. You know, it's just how you present it. What's next for yeah. you, my man? Because it's like you're on the set of a movie right now. You hopped on with your man right quick. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? What you got? What you got cooking? I, I can see how you working. <laughs> Man, listen, I'm out here trying to, you know, live my best life, man, right. live free. I'm, I'm producing a new movie uh, called Flamin' Hot. It's all about the creation of Flamin' Hot Cheetos. Okay. Uh, there was a Mexican janitor. His name was Richard Montanez. He worked for Frito-Lay. He came up with the idea to put chili powder on a Cheeto. Uh, next thing you know, the, the snack becomes the, the number one snack uh, in the country. He goes from being the janitor to becoming the uh, vice president of multicultural marketing now he's referred to as the godfather of Latino marketing. And uh, I'm here, we start production uh, in the next couple of weeks and Eva Longoria is directing this nice. movie. Uh, and so I'm just excited, man. Can't wait to bring that to the world, man. I got a series that I'm producing, man. We got, we got, you know, I'm just, you know, I'm just trying to bring as much content What's as I up? possibly can because people are hurting, what? people need help, people need inspiration. So I'm trying to use entertainment as a vehicle to bring as much inspiration as I can. No, we love it. And you make sure you tell him uh, whoever his people are, that uh, he he's the man because hot Cheetos over here is a real <laughs> deal, baby. <laughs> he's, a genius. We'll he's a genius as far as I'm concerned. Him and the guy yeah, who made ramen noodles, they they in there. <laughs> you feel me? <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, listen, um, I always give my my, my viewers and, and, and the people that ride with me some words of wisdom before I get out of here. And, and just speaking to you today, brother, like I'm just gonna tell him to live free. Yeah. You know, take the expectations off the table. Um, and just understand, like, you know, enjoy the process 
enjoy yeah. it. You know, just just take yeah. time. And, and that's probably one of my biggest regrets is not enjoying the process as much. And everything I do now for me being here with my crew and I just enjoy the process. You know, I, yeah. I just enjoy the, the small things that lead up to the big things. And like you said, just not making expectations. So when you get there and it doesn't work out the way that you want it to work out, you feel like you failed because that's the biggest yeah. W. And I'll tell you the bigger W than that is to actually be successful and so caught up in what's going on that you're not happy even when it works. Wow. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because you're really lost. You got that right. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I want to thank my brother Devon for stopping by, hanging out with us on Worth the Conversation, giving us these gems and jewels. Make sure y'all pick up his new book, Live Free and Exceed Your Highest Expectations, right here on Worth the Conversation or wherever books are sold. Y'all check out my guy, Devon Franklin. Appreciate you, brother. Go shoot that Appreciate movie. you too, man. I'm going to send you my address so you can send me some Cheetos. It's all love. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. Don't worry. Right, love, brother. <laughs> Salute. My brother, God bless <laughs> you, <sure>. God. <laughs>